Hi, so if you clicked on this video, that means you are moving to Japan very soon. Or not, because... Yeah. So in this video, I want to be answering this probably one of the most asked questions. Hey, I'm moving to Japan. Any advice? Which, to be honest, I've been avoiding answering since it's such a broad question and I didn't know how to answer it because I was born and raised here in Japan. So I've kind of switched up the question and asked myself, what would I do if I was a foreigner moving to Japan? So if you are moving to Japan or hoping to someday, this video is right for you. Because there are things that I see foreigners do or don't do that might hurt their overall experience in Japan. So without any further ado, Let's get right into it. Okay, first things first. If you want to know one of the major secrets to having a fulfilling life in Japan, here's what it is. You gotta actually speak Japanese in Japan. <laughs> Sorry, this is super obvious, but I have to get this one now first because I see so many foreigners just to come to Japan with zero Japanese knowledge or whatsoever. I mean, it is possible to live in Japan with zero Japanese, but you are missing out on so many possible opportunities you could get if you could speak even a little bit of Japanese. So don't wait until you arrive in Japan to start studying Japanese. Do it right now. Okay, now that the most the advice is out of the way. Let's get into the real nitty gritty stuff. Okay, so when you first move into a new house or new apartment, you might want to bring gifts to your surrounding neighbors. This is actually a traditional Japanese way to let them know a little bit about yourself when you move into a new place. And you know, sometimes Japanese gift giving culture gets a little bit too crazy and too much, but I personally like this when I do it because it actually serves a purpose. You know, you get to know each other, right? And the gift itself doesn't need to be something super expensive. A box of tissue or a laundry detergent or a pack of candies will suffice. You know, something super cheap and consumable. Because at the end of the day, it's not a matter of what you give, but rather showing them that you care about the Japanese custom to the point where you've got out of your comfort zone to introduce yourself. You know, that's what will make them like you. and. Trust me when I say this, when Japanese neighbors like you, they will take really good care of you. Another tip from me to ease your stay, especially during your beginning phase, is to know what's your name in katakana. So katakana is one of the three Japanese characters specifically used for foreign words. You know, just like I need to write my name in the English alphabet when I go abroad, you often need to write your name in katakana in Japan. So you pretty much need the katakana version of your name from day one actually. And another big reason why this plays such a crucial role in our society is that we don't really use pronouns in our daily conversation. Like we don't say you, we don't say he, we don't say they. Instead, we call you by your name. So if your name is hard to pronounce for Japanese people, you know, you could imagine that it could be a little obstacle in your daily interpersonal communication. Like if you introduce your name just as it is, say, like nobody's gonna remember your name. It's so much easier for us to say, Brittany. And what's tricky here is that there's no consistent rules that you can actually rely on when converting English words to katakana, which I think is the reason why I see so many foreigners just take a random guess and end up making up a whole new katakana word that doesn't really exist in Japanese. So don't just take a guess. What you can do instead is that so there's this website where you can convert your name into a katakana name for free. So Arthur becomes Asa, Catherine becomes Catherine, but Matthew becomes Matthew, Chris becomes Chris, Mike becomes Mike, but Matt becomes not Matt too, but Matt to, and David becomes David to. See, it's pretty random, right? So there's no set pattern where this vowels becomes this sound in Japanese or this consonant becomes this sound or whatsoever. So doing a little research beforehand will make a pretty big difference and Japanese people will definitely appreciate it. If I was a foreigner planning to stay in Japan for an extended period of time, I would definitely go get a college degree first because as advanced as this country may seem, it is still such a I don't know what it's called in English, but which means that without a college degree, not only will you have fewer job opportunities, but it will also affect your daily interactions with others. Because in Japan, especially for people from older generations, college degree is sort of like a validation as a person. And if you speak English and are looking into moving to Japan as an international student or something, I highly recommend you consider applying to top universities, like prestigious universities, like Waseda University or George University or Keio University and stuff like that because 
Here's some good news for you. Japanese universities are so desperate to have international students like you that most of them have much lower standards for foreign students to get in. I actually have a friend who's half American and he got into Keio University, which is one of the top universities in Japan, because he used the foreigner gateway. Despite his fluency in Japanese, because there was no way that he could compete with other, you know, smart Japanese people. And he said it was pretty easy. I know, you may think it seems a bit superficial to pick a university university just for its prestigious name because it is but to me knowing how much of an impact it could give to your future career or the first impression you give to others i would definitely take that advantage and who knows you could build connection with other legitimately smart japanese people who might be able to give you more opportunities and stuff like that most of the classes will be held in english and in japan nobody gives a crap about your gpa but just the name of your university and japanese universities don't charge a triple amount of tuition for foreign students <coughs> america so honestly, as a Japanese person, I don't see why not. It's the biggest cheat code ever. Oh my god, I have been wanting to tell you guys this for so long. I think one of the most valuable skills in Japan, especially if you are planning to live alone, is knowing how to cook by yourself. Because a lot of people seem to think that you can survive in Japan without cooking thanks to konbini, Japanese fast food restaurant, and all the, you know, pre-packed bento box that you can buy for only 5 bucks and stuff like that. But don't get trapped into that, okay? Despite its convenience and the healthy image that they try to portray, it is still a convenience store at the end of the day. Don't be deceived by those YouTube videos and think, oh, in Japan, konbinis have so many healthy food options that I don't have to cook because I can just eat bento and onigiri. No, 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 no. Among Japanese people, their food is known to be full of unhealthy stuff like food additives and stuff like that just because it looks healthier than what you used to have in where you're from it doesn't mean it's healthy a pack of bento is available for just five bucks for a reason so learn how to cook by yourself or in a situation where you want to just buy a pack of bento go to your local supermarket it's a lot cheaper and also after 5 p.m or 6 p.m they usually have their food 30 percent or 50 percent off every day which never happens in konbini so yeah there's no problem liking anime but expressing it too much is don't get me wrong i watch anime all the time i always talk about my favorite anime with my friends but there's one caveat to it which is that there's a difference between expressing your love for anime verbally and showing your love for anime physically while the act itself of watching anime and loving anime as a grown-up has become such mainstream in japan wearing a t-shirt of your favorite anime character or having an you know anime character key charm is still considered kind of childish or geeky if you know what i mean i mean i don't mean to tell you what you can and cannot do with your outfit that's not my intention at all but at the same time i don't want to lie to you and be like oh wear whatever you want and nobody will judge you i promise that's not the truth the truth is that it's still kind of frowned upon if you wear this kind of stuff even in japan and you might not even notice it because no japanese person would you know say to your face that they don't like what you wear so yeah it might not be a bad idea to just keep that in your mind about shaving your body hair japan is one of those countries where there are different standards from western countries for what is acceptable and what's not acceptable between men and women when it comes to body hair so if you're a japanese male you don't usually shave anything but your facial hair it's actually a manner in japan especially in workplaces to have your facial hair shaved or if you're gonna grow them you have to at least you know keep it really neat and clean however you are not supposed to shave the rest of your body unless it's disturbingly hairy or something because ever since i was introduced to this wonderful personal care called shaving your pubes back when i was in america i have been taking good care of my bush but it's in exchange for getting laughed at by my japanese friends every time we go to onsen like i don't even shave it completely i just set my trimmer to seven millimeters but they find it absurd and unmanly i guess but on the other hand if you're a female in japan you are expected to have everything shaved Except, you guessed it right, their pubic hair. I honestly don't know what's up with this don't shave your pubes culture in Japan, but finding a Japanese woman without any bush is as difficult as finding a real Pokemon or something. But anyway, I think Japanese women prefer to shave or wax their hair because we Japanese people have really thick, you know, dark hair. Whereas if you're blonde, your body hair kind of blends in with your skin color and doesn't really stand out as much. That being said, if you don't shave your arms, legs, and even your face as a female, 
It could be a deal breaker for a lot of Japanese guys. So you don't need to worry about it if you're not interested in dating Japanese people at all. But if you want to expand the possibility of dating Japanese people to its maximum, you know what to do. And lastly, but definitely not the least, please upgrade your phone to a newest one and bring it here in Japan. Here's why you don't want to buy a new phone in Japan. Yes, cell phones sold here in Japan are made to make this shadow sound when taking photos and stuff. And you basically cannot get rid of it without rooting your phone, by which you are putting your phone security at risk. This regulation was actually implemented in the hope that it would prevent perverted people from secretly taking up skirt photos and stuff like that. Yes, it has been a serious problem here in Japan. But like, God, it's so annoying. And what's even more frustrating than the shadow sound itself is the fact that this is so normalized in Japan that those companies don't even question it anymore. Because let's be real here, right? How effective is the shadow sound to serve its intended purpose? It must have been a super effective method back in the early 2000s when everyone was using flip phones and stuff like that. But now, in the era where you can easily install a side and camera app, how many of those, you know, perverted people who are sneaky enough to try to upskirt someone in public gonna be like, what? The false shadow sound doesn't stop real perps. If it does, it shouldn't be an ongoing problem in today's society anymore. I get it. For most of people, it's not a big deal because it's one of those things that doesn't really bother you until you realize it doesn't have to be the way it is. But in my opinion, right, the inconvenience it causes for us innocent people definitely outweighs the deterrence against those, you know, perverted people. Like, what do you think? So yeah, I actually buy my phones online from overseas, but I have to pay for the, you know, import tax and also shipping and stuff like that. So yeah, it would be a good idea to bring your phone in Japan. And also, speaking of phones, texting using your phone number isn't a thing in Japan. Like literally nobody does that. Like when you meet a Japanese person, they're gonna ask you for your LINE account, not your phone number. So please have a LINE app installed on your phone beforehand. Trust me, it will make your life so much easier. And thank you Boxu for sponsoring today's video. So Boxu has been my lovely sponsor for this channel from the outset. And I've heard a lot of you guys enjoying the experience with Boxu. But in case you didn't know already, this is a Japanese snack subscription service that I genuinely love. But they're not just all about the gourmet Japanese experience. They partnered with local makers across Japan to collect more than 20 types of snacks to put in each box. So this is a perfect way of getting to know the Japanese culture with your friends and family. So if you are interested in getting boxu for yourself or your loved ones, don't forget to use my discount code to get 10% off of your subscription. All right, that's all that I've got for today's video. And yeah, it was such a random list, I guess, but I hope you find it somewhat helpful. And if you are already living in Japan currently, or if you have lived in Japan in the past and you have you know, some advice that I didn't mention in this video, please comment down below so that other people can use it. So yeah, um, thank you so much guys for watching my video today and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Thank you for Thank you for watching my video today. Watch my video today. I'll see you. I'll see you in my next video. In my next video. Bye. Pay, bye, pay. <laughs> <laughs>